Mastery. Hello, and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero, and I thank you so much for joining me for the Saturday podcast today. So this week, we've been talking about the shift, you know, creating a shift in your life, raising up your energy, cl- climbing up the mountain, becoming who you were born to be, all of that. Just thinking about it is so exciting. I mean, do you know that you can be whatever you want to be? You can be whoever you decide to be. I mean, it's crazy. Do you realize it? Like anything, if you dream it, you can do it. The possibilities are never ending. But how, you might ask, where do I start? What should I do first? Well, you got to ask yourself, who am I really? What do I want and why? Well, for that, you got to look inside. You got to be willing to dig it all up and out. Do the proper kind of goal setting with intention, connected to your heart. You have to know what you truly desire when you're connected to your soul. What do you want when you're connected to God? Because you're here for a reason. You're no accident. You're, you have a purpose. So you have to set your goals that align with your heart's desire and with your purpose. Remember, those are the types of goals that can create a shift. Those kinds of things will rise you up. Not like the worldly goals where I want this and I want that. And you ask someone, oh, why do you want that? And they say, well, I deserve it. Okay, yeah, maybe you do deserve it. But why do you want it? Sometimes people tell you like, well, why not? Which I think is a crazy answer. And that's probably not their heart's desire. (laughs) It may well be mimetic desire. You want it because they have it. You want it because, well, those guys have it and they look complete. And I want to be happy and complete. Well, here at Stress Mastery, we know that the outside things will not give us internal happiness. We can't go out and buy it. It doesn't matter a bit if we deserve it or not. We can't earn it. The shift is something that we can achieve. We must arrive there. We can't force our way, and we each have our own path. It's our own journey. So I will tell you that we will need to learn to master um, conflict resolution. There's no other way. Otherwise, we're too unsettled. You're going to have to have presence of mind, and you're probably going to have to name your ego whether you want to or not, because this is going to help you create awareness. So we also have to stop complaining. I keep hearing Bill talking about that. And I really believe it. Complaining about anything, even if it's a little bit, causes a disconnect. So you're going to have to learn to be 100% responsible for yourself. It isn't anybody else's fault but your own. So we need awareness about ourselves of our energy, of who we are and what we believe. We need to know who is the voice that we're listening to. Is that me or my ego? Who's running the show right now? Gosh, you have to notice that constant voice in your head because if you're not paying attention, you can easily get streamed. You may not even notice like for an hour or a month or who knows. I mean, I've known people that were stuck their whole life. I know I was stuck for my whole life until a few years ago. I had no idea about the ego, the human construct, the stress loop. I didn't know that we all behaved exactly alike because we're all human beings. I didn't know about the stages of development. So if your friends and family are stuck and they don't get it, it's okay. They just don't know any better. Just like we didn't used to know any better. They can't even hear. They can't contemplate. They can't take it. Even if you could ask him, not that it's easy to ask, hey, is that you or your ego that you're listening to? (laughs) Most of the time we can't ask. They'd think we're crazy. It doesn't naturally come up in conversation. You have to purposely bring it up. So unless you're engaging with people who are asking about it or other people who are working on themselves, it doesn't come up easily. So just give them a break. We have to be open-minded, and most people aren't. It's just the way it is. 80% of us will be stuck in stage three, so we can't look for a bunch of support in our journey, on our climb. Um, And you're going to have to want to make the change for yourself, whether they're going to help you or not. Because even when you decide to make a change, there's still going to be lots of work to do. But it's worth it. But it is a commitment, and it's not always easy. So lots of times we give up. I hope you won't, though. Since you're listening to this podcast, you're probably at least somewhat open. I know that you're at least willing to look at your life and how to make things better. You're probably somewhat aware of what's going on in there. At least enough to realize that every choice, every single moment of your life is completely up to you. It's always up to you. We have a choice. Life is all about the choices that we make. So we have a choice to be stuck or unstuck. And we're going to be stuck until we decide not to be. 
We talked a lot about that last week. So we'll either not grow emotionally or we'll stay stunted where we are until we decide to take another intentional step. It's just the way it is. If we don't keep personal development on our life's to-do list, then we're going to be stuck. We're not going to shift. We'll stay right where we're at. So we can stay at the level that we're at forever. So if you're comfortable there, maybe you want to stay. I can tell you for sure, I would have stayed in my mid to high red zone cage for the rest of my life if I hadn't have met Bill or someone like him. I mean, I was stuck for decades. I didn't even know that there could be a different life. I lived discontent with my life every single day of my life. I had a good life, but I was never complete. I felt like I was going nowhere. I was always missing something. I wasn't settled in my heart. I wasn't like truly happy and I didn't have peace and joy for sure. I was good at making plans and I had good, you know, stick to itness, so I followed through. So in many parts of my life, I was doing perfectly well, but still stuck. I really wanted someone else to fix me or make me happy or at least tell me what the heck I was doing wrong. Something had to be wrong with me. <laughs> I wanted to shift. I just didn't know that there was a shift to be had. I didn't know anything about it. So where are you stuck at? I mean, have you thought about that? What can you do to help yourself? Most people are in mid red zone, like the fear energy. Life's tough. People stink. If only I had a chance. You know, we love that cage, that uncomfortable comfort zone. It's so cozy for us. <laughs> We're so used to it there. So we just stay there. We want to shift. We want to rise. We want a better life. And yet we stay year after year, locked up and trapped, afraid to take that step that we need to take. We're stuck. So if you get locked there and you feel stuck, believe me, you're normal. You know, avoidance and procrastination, they're just fear in another package. I say a different package because we can wrap it all up in pretty paper and put a nice bow on top and say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. But that's probably just because you don't want to face the truth about whatever it is you're looking at. Maybe you're scared to do it. You don't want to do it because it's hard or you don't know how to do it. So you just sit there doing nothing. That's that's my MO. Uh, we also get fear of biting off more than we can chew. We're all scared of the unknown. I mean, everybody is. You don't know what's going to happen. So it's easy to sit there and not do it. So fear of failure, that's a real thing. And so is fear of success. And so if you want to shift, you have to resolve the conflict. What are you afraid of? Face the truth and get to working on it. You can work through it, but you have to try. You can't do it just by sitting there, right? So set your goals and then make your plan. Step into the desire energy. Connect to your heart one step at a time. And next thing you know, you've got it. I know Bill has told us in the past that um, if you live down in the red zone, it may be harder to climb up and out. Like I'm talking about the energies of like depression and apathy. Those are below fear. If you're not looking at your um, energies chart that I hope you're looking at, um, they get stuck, you know, worse. And I don't know how to help people like that because I'm not a trained psychologist. So like Bill says that you may need to get help. But in the meantime, you could listen to Joel Osteen. He has a message of hope. And oh my gosh, I can't listen to him without feeling better. He really does give you hope. He makes me smile and he lifts my energies, my spirit, and he lightens my heart. But you guys, believe me, we can all shift. If you can't start right where you're at and you need to get help, then get help. But the rest of us that are in fear... We can pull ourselves up into courage. We just have to make a plan and take a step. So we can all climb the mountain, um, but we have to stay connected to our heart. So remember, name your ego because it helps with awareness. It helps you realize if your ego is trying to grab a hold of you like a runaway train with all those negative thoughts and stories. So remember, the ego is always reminding you about your past and making up stories of the future. So if that's what's on your mind and you're spinning in that, then it's your ego. So stay aware of it. Notice who's talking. You, me, we only have this moment. We only have right now. Remember right now, who you are now and what you're doing now is all that matters. If you want to create a shift, you have to stay present. It's really important. If you can't stay here in this moment, then you're not going to be able to resolve the conflict that is happening right now in this moment. So getting stuck in the past or worrying about the future never got anyone anywhere. You just stay stuck. 
So you can't change the past and future. It already is what it is. So you got to let it go. How much better will you be able to create your future if you could let go of the past? All those regrets, the shame, the shoulda, coulda, woulda, none of them matter anymore. Let it go. It just is gone. You have no use for them here in the now. So I've said it before, it's like carrying tons of bricks in your backpack while you're trying to make a shift and climb up the mountain. How hard is that? Why make things harder than they need to be? My gosh. So we got to let it go. Why carry it with us? It will only hurt you. And remember, when you relive the trauma, your subconscious doesn't even know that it's not happening right now. I think that's crazy. I mean, look at what the damage that we're doing to ourselves. It sets off the alarm system, starts up the stress loop, surges adrenaline and cortisol, and puts you into fight or flight. You know how bad that feels. And for what? There's absolutely no reason. It's not even happening anymore. We're just remembering the crap of the past. And I think sometimes I remember it worse than maybe it was. I'm not sure. But why would we do it to ourselves? It only hurts us, our body, our mind, even our soul, I think. And it doesn't change a thing, nothing. So let go of the regret, the guilt, and the shame. Free yourself of the pain and the sadness of the past. I'm asking you to leave those bricks down in the valley. Just drop them where you're at. You got no use for them where you're going. We certainly don't need them. And you could uh, create a shift much easier if you're not carrying the unresolved conflict. In fact, I don't think you can until you let go of the conflict. So use the let go technique, journal all of it out and make a decision for yourself to let it go for once and for all. Put forgiveness on your list of wants when you're doing your goal setting. Learn to forgive easier, learn to forgive faster, learn to forgive fully. And don't forget, forgiveness is for yourself too. You can't be mad at yourself. You can't carry a regret. So you can let it all go as soon as you make a choice to do it, but you have to be serious about it. I've known so many people who refuse to forgive, it cracks me up. They actually make a decision to be pissed off all the time, to carry a resentment. I think it's sad. I mean, what a waste of energy. What a waste of life. You guys, being mad or unforgiving only hurts you, remember. It doesn't affect the person that hurt you. It only hurts you, and it stops you from living the life that you were meant to live. It stops you from being the person that you were meant to be. I also notice that people who carry all that anger and regret through their life get worse and worse over time. It's like you knew somebody 10 years ago, and they're even madder now. They fly off the handle easier. They get mad like zero to 60 in two seconds flat. Yikes. Who wants to live like that? I can't stand it. Not me. And I certainly hope you don't either because life is way too short. So please work on letting go of the programs that you're carrying around. Anything that doesn't serve you anymore, drop it like a hot potato. Drop it like a ton of bricks. Let them go for once and for all. And so you can use the let go technique. I think Bill made it up. Oh my gosh. It is amazing because it totally works. Uh, you can find that in the Stress Mastery community. I assume it's there in the documents. If you can't find it, reach out to me. I'll help you find it. Um, using the let go technique is amazing. It worked so well for me. It like actually changed my life. Uh, we need to re resolve all of our conflicts, like all of them, the ones within and the ones without. I Let it go. Let go of the stuff you're carrying. Let go of the ones that happen right away. I, I can't stress enough how important it is to let things go. You got to forgive yourself and others immediately if possible. So practice awareness. I never thought in a million years that I could meditate. People who know me are probably, they probably don't believe it's true. They probably think I'm full of it. But I really can meditate. I was always a little hyper and unsettled. But guess what? I'm not too bad at it. And once you can relax and meditate, you will absolutely notice a difference when you're not relaxed. You can't help it. Meditation puts you in the green zone. It helps you find your still point. So when you get all rattled and shaken up later in the day, even if it's just a little bit, you notice. It doesn't feel good to be in the red zone anymore. And I'm happy to tell you, the red zone is no longer comfortable for me. I can feel it right away. I finally shifted up a bit because I used to be in the red zone 90% of my life, day and night. I went to sleep in the red zone, woke up in the red zone. But over the past few years, I realized that creating awareness is really important. And you will begin to notice when you're not settled and you'll 
use the let go technique and pull yourself back out of it. Before that, like I said earlier, I mean, I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't realize that we all have an ego. I surely didn't know that there were so many tools to help me be more settled, like by naming the ego, letting go of the past. And how about just taking a breath and slow down? Being able to find your still point feels wonderful. Oh, calm. Just take an intentional breath and relax into it. Bill calls it the four R's, rest, relax, release, respond. That breath connects me to the Holy Spirit. It connects me to God. And that is where I'm happy. That is where joy comes from. That's where I can find peace. It's never outside. It's always inside of us. I certainly hope that my ideas for creating a shift will help you guys create a shift for yourself. You can contact me at Peggy at livingrightwithbillcourtright.com or find me at PeggyRomero.com. It's my website. We love your feedback and we're happy to help you on your journey any way we can. I want to let you guys know that we are doing a goal setting workshop via Zoom in two weeks. That'll be the last Saturday of October. Let me know if you want to join us. Happy to have you. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on that mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. And the links are right below in the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired. Stay inspired.